Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning, welcome you all to this next lecture in this course on analytical, spectral and microscopy applications of uh, inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. In the past several classes we have been going through a number of spectroscopy techniques. Immediately before this lecture we had three to four lectures which were covering on the EPR or ESR spectroscopy. And now we have come to another spectroscopy which is, is, is something to do with the electron and electron kinetic energy and also one can get the electron binding energy. So based on the binding energies you can do a chemical analysis and that is what the spectroscopy is that. So this is nothing but the photoelectron or photo emission spectroscopy and it has a couple of different names based on the source that you use that is x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy where you use the x-ray as the source or you can use UVPS that is called the ultraviolet uh, uh, radiation uh, etc. And then this in the initial stages this was developed as electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis. All this is concerned with the surface analysis. So this is a spectroscopy meant for the surface analysis. So it is uh, either referred as a XPS in some books it is written as XPES as well. Now let us look at uh, details of this. So as I said that this particular technique is something to do with the surface and you are going to analyze the surface part of it. So which means obviously it is very important in catalysis. You know very well the heterogeneous catalysts are important in uh, the catalyst surface are important in the catalysis of that. So and this is a technique which will talk to you about what is there in the surface. Is the surface is active or surface has some passivation everything can be identified with that. So now that brings a question what is a surface and uh, why is the surface analysis is important. I just now mentioned the surface ana analysis is important if anything occurs at the surface and what it occurs is in the heterogeneous catalyst is at the surface reaction. Now you look at this particular I kindly draw your attention to the slide and you can see it's shown like uh, layers with the different colors like red then blue then green then gray kind of things. So these are something to do with a, a top very small uh, level which is something like a 1 to 2 to 3 to nanometers or so and uh, uh, so and these are just a few atomic layers. It need not be exactly 3 atomic layers a few atomic layers you can take it as. The next level is a little lower so you can call this as a topmost surface then the ultra thin film that you have which is 3 to 30 atomic uh, layers and which is around up to about 10 nanometers and then you have further a little bit more deeper. So it is around 30 to 300 which is 10 nanometers to about 1000 nanometers. So it is uh, just a couple of nanometers and up to about 10 20 nanometers and uh, up to about a micron that means 100 uh, 1000 nanometers and further beyond this it is known as the, the bulk ok. So this is the different uh, you know regions of the solid surface that you can define and uh, the surface refers to the top few nanometers uh, maybe 1 to 3 nanometers or so top few layers of that. So and that is what is a surface and it is important because you need to know what the surface con consists of surface groups present surface uh, atoms and molecules present in that which could be responsible for the uh, uh, activation of the uh, catalysis or so some things which will block the activity which will block the catalysis so what kind of a species. So therefore chemical information is obtained only from the uppermost atomic layers of these ones by this particular spectroscopy 
up to about 10 nanometers up to about 20 30 nanometers why why only 10 20 nanometers because the electrons which have come out of this upon impinging the radiation these electrons have got certain level of speed kinetic energy or the energies kinetic energy or energies and such electrons are between 20 to 2000 electron volts so for this reason the electron spectroscopy is this is used and this particular technique is known as the surface you know chemical analysis of that we will look at uh, some of these details of this uh, just in a in a in a while and so i have as i have talked to you now about the surface so you have a, a bulk a material so is one level of uh, level and then another level another level the bulk that's what we have seen so we will be looking at uh, these mostly a little bit into this portion so so this is the one where you are analyzing the uh, things okay so therefore the electron spectroscopy uh, not electronic spectroscopy electron spectroscopy so electronic spectroscopy is something different where electron uh, excitation from ground to excited state which i talked to you under the uv visible absorption spectroscopy but this is not the electronic spectroscopy it is electron spectroscopy and a host of things will happen when you incident light on the material of course this can be done from the solids from the liquids from the gases etc but on the surface layer basically so depending upon the energies of the electrons that are coming out this can be photoelectrons this can be oj electrons etc etc so that is why you call in general as electron spectroscopy so if you use this with the uh, x radiation so this is called the xps o x p e s photo electron spectroscopy or on the other hand if you use with the uv radiation so you can re refer this as uv p e s uh, spectroscopy or UVPS spectroscopy and uh, uh, of course these are all from the photoelectron and there are some uh, uh, the higher energy UV so therefore extreme energy UV you, uh, so this is the extreme uh, energy of UV that means it is the highest energy of the UV that is what you call it as and this also is there and I will be talking to you just in a while so depending upon these uh, radiations that you use that is the incident radiations the kind of information that you are getting will be different because this x radiation will bring the core electrons and these things will give the the valence type of electrons or lone pair of electrons those kind of things okay so that will differ from that now let us see what are we are talking about uh, the X-ray electron or a photoelectron or OJ electron. I draw your attention to the slide, uh, please. Here you can see this particular picture. Uh, electrons in the solid are there, or in an atom, if you want to look at as as the K shell L and different parts of the L, and the electrons are there. Now, if you incident the light, for example, X radiation, and X radiation is a high energy radiation, so it will penetrate to the core level. So this is obviously the core level and as you go you get the Fermi, you get the vacuum outs. So when uh, this energy level is a high, energy is high, it can touch the even core level. The core level electron is ejected and that is what you measure. You measure the kinetic energy of this one. So if you know the energy that you have supplement, supplied and you know the energy of the, from the velocity of this electron, you know the energy of the electron coming out. So the difference. So that is what the difference is the binding energy. So you can get the binding energies of core level and instead if I use instead of the X radiation if I use UV radiation they will start removing the electrons from the molecular orbital levels etc. So therefore you can get the valence electrons, you can get the bonding electrons, you can get the information from the bonding, you can get the information from the core and that core electron or binding energies will depend upon what is their surrounding to that. There are few other techniques in general 
The one which I talked to you here is called the XPS, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, your X-ray energy and then core electron is out. Now, there are other methods, X-ray fluorescence method. So, X-ray fluorescence method is the one where you have the electron out, there is a hole and some other electron falls into this and that releases in terms of the energy and that is called emission. So, this is X-ray fluorescence emission and this is not part of this particular course now or for the particular this topic. Another technique is OJ is means a secondary process. So, this is one is photoelectron, uh, other is, so photoelectron is directly electron that is coming out from the core level of that or even coming from the bonding level, it is, does not matter, direct electron that is coming out. The another process is called OJ, A U G E R is spelled as the OJ, okay, OJ electron. So, OJ electron is a secondary process and this is a primary process. So, primary process means when the radiation impinges on the core level or on the, on the bonding level, what comes out electron directly and that is what you measure, that is a photoelectron. Instead, second that is called a primary process. Secondary process means that electron comes out, but it goes and settles somewhere else and another electron falls down to that and as a result of that energy that comes out here, it is coming out as a fluorescence. Instead of coming out as a fluorescence, that energy is used to kick out another electron. I will show you again in another slide with uh, some more connectivity to that. So, another electron coming out. So, it is not the direct electron which was ejected initially what you are measuring, it is another electron which you are measuring that is OJ. So, in this particular course, we are not going to look at the OJ process, we are not going to look at the X-ray fluorescence process, we are going to look at the X-ray uh, photo electron, uh, electrons only. So, I hope that is clear now. So, you can use for determining oxidation state because if the oxidation states change, this electron binding energies changes. So, uh, you can uh, identify the coatings and polymers, surface compounds identification, surface composition. Of course, if the surface is got blocked by something, because many times the, the metallic surfaces uh, in the air, in the water, they get hydrolyzed, they get oxidized. So, therefore, oxo, hydroxo species is formed. You can find out how much layer of that, all these things. So, anti-reflection coating, variety of these things. So, all the surface uh, species, surface coating, surface whatever the chemical active species, inactive species, both can be identified. So, that means these techniques can be used to identify and determine the element that are present in the electronics and their electronic structure of the surface of the sample. So, this can be done for the solids, liquids, gases, any of these things. Okay? So, as I already mentioned to you earlier, if you use the X-ray, then you will call XPS and if you use the higher energy part of that UV, then uh, it is referred as the E, the extreme ultraviolet UV, e, U, P, S. So, XPS, UPS, all these kinds of a things. And these, uh, the kind of a photoelectron spectroscopy was initially initiated by the Saigban and started publishing his work in starting from 1957 and he has tried on variety of organic inorganic uh, kind of a uh, samples and then started analyzing the chemical species present at the surface and their electron uh, using these electron electrons coming out with their uh, the kinetic energies which were converted into their binding energies. So, at the end what you have, what you interpret is the binding energy. So, binding energies are basically interpreted. So, using that you can make the chemical analysis. So, he has done for a variety of things and many other people have used the technique because he has built the spectrometer and then worked and then he was awarded the Nobel Prize about 24, 25 years later because this has become very popular. UV radiation, highest energy of UV radiation, X radiation, all of these kind of things. So, in simplistic way, if you want to see what kind of a instrumentation he has built and his instrumentation has been utilized by others, 
both the researchers and the commercial people and then it has commercialized afterwards and then people have so very simple if you take this block please look at this slide this block has your sample or sample layer or sample coating or sample surface if you take any of those and use a radiation that could be x radiation to be uv radiation high energy uv radiation so these are all so what will happen x radiation will try to knock out the core electrons uv radiations will uh, knock out the bonding kind of electrons etc so therefore you can build uh, electronic structure of the core electronic structure of the bonding so therefore overall structure can be built with this so once you have ejected the electron you need you need those electrons will come it is not one electron several electrons will come with different kinetic energies and then you will be focusing on that so how do you know it is a photo electron how do you know it is the oj electron how do you know other kinds of things or they are coming from different levels yes these are all their energies will differ their binding energies will differ therefore their kinetic energies will differ because their kinetic energies are different their binding energies are different so based on that you can identify you can differentiate uh, all these so you can differentiate and then you can build the structure so let us look at gazing whatever the principle i have talked using an example so let us take one the system is a zinc sulfide system zinc sulfide solid in which chromium is doped so there will be some chromium even at the surface now we are looking at the the surface the surface level and you are looking at the uh, different emissions emission coming from directly that means as a result of heating your energy and other processes as i mentioned for example the process of of the the oj type okay now here we have uh, the the part a and then part b and c the part b and c are coupled together i will explain let's first let us see the part a so this is you have put your energy radiation and this energy radiation is sufficient enough to knock the electron from this intermediate band okay so this is the intermediate band which you can also call in terms of the bonding kind of thing so you see the valence band and the intermediate bond band and then out so that means you have used somewhat lower kind of an energy so representation the standard photo emission so you have energy mostly uv kind of an energy and that will take out your electron from the intermediate band or the valence band and the electron that is coming out directly its kinetic energy is being measured so therefore this is what is called the direct emission or photo electron not the oj and this is coming from the chromium and uh, chromium coming from the 3d so i will also explain using this one just in a while but first let us look at this now the b and c are the secondary process so this process is directly coming is called the primary and if it is not coming from the direct it is called the secondary process so in this the b and c this plot and this picture are explaining secondary process so the electron first excites so you have a 2p level you have a valence band we have the intermediate band etc and this is exciting the electron or knocking the electron from the uh, 2p from the chromium which is, is doped and the chromium 2p how do we know from the binding energies later on you will know where it is coming from all that so and this uh, is uh, will be dislodging another electron from the intermediate band or valence band and that electron comes out and what you are seeing outside is that electron i mean that is not the primary that is the secondary so this is the electron you knocked out and this electron in turn knocks out this one and what you are measuring okay uh, is that and because of this electron is knocking out there is a excess energy is there and and this particular hole is filled by another electron from here so from electron from here will come and fill this and another electron from here will go so that means you are initially knocking out an electron from 2b 2p and later another electron comes out from ib and that comes out because another electron in that ib will come down to the 2p that is what it is so this is the oj process a u g e r and we are not going to talk about the peaks and this so we'll be talking about the direct emission for all the applications i have uh, not taken up the examples of the secondary process into this only primary primary process for this particular course
and that is sufficient enough. So, the process of 2 and 3 together is the secondary process. Same thing let me explain you. So, this is your the solid of zinc sulphide where the sulphur is uh, sorry chromium is being doped and chromium 2p level and 3d level and you can call this as the t2g and eg kind of a level all those kinds of things. So, when you impinge electron it knocks out uh, from this uh, level of the valence or intermediate band electron is coming out that is a direct emission. The other way is if you use a slightly higher energy or x radiation kind of energy instead of it taking the valence bond kind of things it can take somewhat little core level. For this the 2 p itself is a core level. So, that electron will go, but that is not what is coming out. So, that electron will go and uh, and that is a higher energy. So, therefore, another electron will come from here and fill this one and one of these electron will go out. So, this is what is going out and this is what you measure and that is the secondary process that is the Oshie process. So, I, I think I have talked to you in different ways in diff based on different slides based on different figures. I, th I hope you understood what is a direct process, photo electron process, what is the OJ process is a secondary process. Okay? We do not use the indirect, we use the secondary process. So, primary process, secondary process, direct process and this secondary kind of a emission. Now, these are going from energy bonding uh, binding energies of this to this level, this to this level, this this to level, these levels. This can be measured in terms of the binding energy. How do you get the binding energy? The energy that you supply minus the kinetic energy whatever you measure, what you are measuring is kinetic energy. You are not measuring the binding energy, but you are using the binding energy for analysis. You are using the binding energy for spectra, but that is obtained from the uh, subtracting the water and then work function has to be subtracted that you do not need to worry about it. You can also plot in terms of the kinetic uh, delay or time, time of flight. So, the electrons coming from the core, can electron coming from the next level, next level etcetera, the time delay or time process will be there and that is called the time uh, of uh, flight. So, when you measure. So, you can use any of these things as the parameter or the spectrum and in general what we use is this one, what is shown in the D. Please look at the, uh, the slide and I am uh, focusing. So, that is binding energy versus the intensity. Intensity is how many such electrons having such kind of a binding energy, how many electrons have got that. So, that is the intensity. So, that intensity will talk about the concentration and the concentration will talk about the ratios in, uh, of the different elements present in that. I hope this is clear now for you uh, among all these. So, we are going to look at only one process for all the examples in the coming up examples that is the photo electron spectrum that is primary electron emission not the secondary process not the Auger process AUGR is known as Auger. Okay. Now, suppose you have a solid of course, you have the surface and that the surface we think whatever the compound you have in the bulk no there are many other things is possible. You see an example here, this is a silicon wafer which has some dirt on that okay? and that is means is a silicon wafer surface is not cleaned using acid etcetera to remove impurity. The silicon wafer when you leave it outside exposed to moisture, exposed to oxygen or air, they can all make different kinds of things or when you make your silicon wafer itself, there could be some few other impurities are built in also and that is what is referred as a dirty silicon vapor, a wafer. Now, if you look at this one by applying the x radiation, the source is aluminum. So, the energy is 1486 electron volts and now what will happen? It will touch all the surface atoms, all the surface species and then give electrons. So, it gives electrons afterwards you convert into the from kinetic energy into binding energy. Kindly see this uh, the, the slide I am I'm showing the based on the slide and you can see on the x axis you have a binding energy. The binding energy is your kinetic energy, your energy of the x ray minus the kinetic energy minus the wave function or the core that one which is a common that you do not need to worry about it. Okay? So, you have the electrons coming from copper, copper 
so copper copper 2s copper 2p copper 2 uh, p 3 over 2 etc etc don't matter so this whole thing is coming from copper okay this is Auger, you can disregard this and uh, here uh, you have uh, coming uh, with this so this is the copper impurity present in this so this is the one now if you look at the total spectrum of the entire surface you will see there is some impurity of oxygen kind of things but you don't need to worry about them there is some fluorine impurities there there is some tin impurities there there is some nickel and nitrogen impurities there there is some carbon impurities there there is some of course silicon that is the original so you have the silicon silicon that is the original you have a large amount of concentration you have some amount of copper carbon impurity nitrogen impurity etc so you can see that the besides the silicon you have many other elements and now you can take integration of each of this and you can convert into percentage the fluorine is 0.5% oxygen is 39% nitrogen 1.7% Carbon is 25%, silicon is 30 So, it is actually a silicon wafer, supposed to have only silicon, but on the surface you have all of them. The bulk may not be surface. So, within top 5, 10 nanometers to 15, 20 nanometers. And such kind of spectrum is called a wide scan spectrum or a survey spectrum. So, that means you look at the whole surface at a low resolution, whole surface at a low resolution. So, this is what the survey spectrum is so this is survey spectrum gives the whole surface whatever the components are there whatever the atomic species are whatever molecular species are there everything you will get and what you measure is kinetic energy what you use is a binding energy so kinetic en total energy supplied minus the kinetic energy is your binding energy and this is coming from species of the carbon silicon nitrogen fluorine etc and then within that is a carbon with the 2s so how do we know based on their the kinetic energy so after subtracting you get you know the binding energy binding energies are very well known the range of that so the 2s here etc and 1s is coming here so because 1s is much more deeper than the 2s so 1s energy is a more binding energy so like that silicon you don't need to mark and remember anything we know that 1s then 2 then 3, then 4 and that is how the levels we know very well, so roughly in that. But you always have the guideline of using these energies that, okay. So, I will just show one or two examples in this class before we take up more and more examples and application kind of thing and all of these are based on photoelectron spectrum, not the secondary process. If there are some secondary process peaks, we ignore, we do not take. So, let us look at uh, uh, this molecule trifluoroethyl trifluoroacetate. Okay. So, this is uh, CF3 COO acetate CH2. And this is a spectrum for carbon 1s. So, we are looking at the carbon 1s spectrum. Okay, and that is where please you look at that. This is your binding energy. So, it is somewhere 290, 295, 300, etc. So, the ones which come in that range 282 to 300 plus, they are the carbon, basically carbon 1s. Uh, there is binding energy in electron volts. Now, within this, this carbon, there are four peaks are there 1, 2, 3, 4. This peak has a very lowest binding energy, a little higher energy little higher binding energy, much highest binding energy 4. And if you look at your molecule, there is one CH3, there is one CH which is also attached to CH2 which is attached to 1 O. This is another carbon and one side attached to double bond O, other side attached to O, other side attached to carbon. And there is another carbon which is attached to with the four, three uh, fluorine groups. So, therefore, you can understand that then this is coming at highest because the flu three fluorines are, are basically withdrawing the electron density and they are becoming more and more positive that means more and more greater and greater the binding energy. So, the binding energy is higher here. So, more electronic uh, electron electronegativity groups the greater the binding energy. The next one is oxygens. So, oxygens will be next 
and here this has got one oxygen and one methyl. So, it will be next and this has got no oxygens at all only hydrogens only carbon. So, it will be lowest. Now, you understand. So, the more greater the electronegative groups the greater the, the positive charge for that nucleus for that one s uh, uh, electrons therefore, greater the binding energy. So, that is where that means kinetic energy coming out will be less that is what you measure you can see that. So, this is coming here this is coming here with uh, and this is here. Now, let us look at another simple molecule acetone molecule. So, acetone has got one carbon here two more carbons here these two are roughly the same. So, therefore, you have two types of carbons. Now, if you see this carbon has attachment with oxygen so with the electronegative. So, it will it should come at higher binding energy yes it is coming at higher binding energy and these two. So, how do we know these two have come? If you take the area of this peak and area of this peak and find out it will be 1 is to 2. So, this will 1 this will be 2 the 1 carbon these are the 2 carbons you can see that. So, this has a greater electronegative atom directly attached. So, this will be greater binding energy lower binding energy. Now, if you take not only carbon you can also take some reagent like sodium azide kind of thing and you look at the nitrogen 1 s. So, you are looking at the nitrogen 1 s spectrum. So, here you see and this comes somewhere around 400 range. So, 390 to 410 uh, etcetera kind of thing. Now, if you look at the azide moiety has got a nitrogen uh, minus on both ends and nitrogen plus in the center. So, in the center nitrogen plus the plus charge will make it more you know buried. So, therefore, greater binding energy then you found the binding energy is greater and then here you have the these two uh, negative. So, that means negatively charged ones will come to with a lower binding energy much lower binding energy positively charged will come with a much higher binding energy. One another example before I close this uh, class you can see the uh, citric acid this is a carbon with uh, this oxygen this oxygen carboxylic there is another carbon which is not attached directly to oxygen there is another carbon which is attached to one oxygen. So, three types so the carboxylic and uh, the one with OH only one OH bond and nothing none of those strong. So, the three the three types you can see this you refer it as a aliphatic it is coming here and the alcoholic this is the one which is here and uh, this is the one which is here bind greater binding energy here the binding the binding energies are this is the kinetic energy. So, binding energy will be the reverse of that. So, reverse means higher. So, this will be highest and now these areas if you uh, take this area this area and this area you will find that this is only one and this kind of things are two and this kind of things are three. So, therefore, you will get one is to two is to three. So, this is one this is two and this is three areas. So, you can make you can so, because there are three carboxylic groups here 1 2 3 that and and only one COH attached one and there are two with the CH 2 groups. So, that is where thing is. So, this will be lowest in uh, binding energy this is not binding energy this is kinetic energy you have to subtract from the total energy total energy is constant. So, therefore, you are subtracting a higher number the value will be lower subtracting a lower number value will be higher and then this is the alcoholic carbon is carboxylic carbon. So, 1 is to 2 is to 3 ratio. So, let me uh, let me stop at that stage and we will go through this uh, particular uh, travel uh, in the next class we will uh, work out many more examples of organic many more examples of inorganic. Then we will also look at some applications towards the surface means catalysis catalysis applications etcetera. Thank you very much.